Happy day, guys. What is going on? So glad you're with me for another episode of Snappa Lytical. Before we dive in, I appreciate all of your support. I hope you are learning and opening up your mind to be able to think for yourself and dive into reputable resources that will support questions you may have, concerns, but support the research based off of your findings. So let's go. What are we talking about now, guys? So we know the GOP debate is coming up Wednesday. Yes, it's going to be here on Wednesday. So I wanted to dive in and just talk about who is expected to be there, who may not be there, and what you guys think about it. I think you all may know who I am supporting, but in the event that you don't, it is okay. Let's dive into this and talk about it. Republican presidential candidates are set to take the stage for the first 2024 debate this Wednesday. Let's go. Former President Donald Trump writing on True Social Sunday night that he will not be participating. His GOP challengers weighing in over the weekend. Listen to this. Well, I expect it to be even more important without Donald Trump on the stage because this is the first time voters are going to be able to contrast the candidates and their positions. I'm actually still hoping he shows up. I think every one of us that have qualified for that debate stage ought to Why? Why? To be on the stage, be willing to square off, uh, answer the tough questions, and also draw a, a bright line. Donald Trump is afraid to go on the debate stage and answer for being a proven loser. I think Donald Please. Trump is free to make whatever decision is, he feels is right for him right. for the first couple of debates. A new Emerson College poll finding Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy are tied for second among wow. GOP primary voters at 10 percent each, okay. while Trump is well in the lead at 56 percent. Joining me now, Fox News political analyst Juan Williams and also joining me, Fox News political analyst Gianna Caldwell. Gentlemen, good morning. Gianna, you, of course, are the author of the book Taken for Granted. But Juan, I'm going to start with you on all of this. Uh, here we go this week, Juan. What do you think we are going to see on that debate stage come Wednesday night? Well, good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Giannis. I, I think this is the good fight morning. to be the alternative to Trump. Uh, clearly, right. exactly. Donald Trump has a sizable lead right. uh, in all the polls, including uh, the polls in Iowa, uh, where all the candidates have been campaigning so heavily. But right now, you do see that there are some of that base, some of the Trump base that could be peeled away. So, so far in this campaign, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, has been the principal alternative. And it looked like, you know, the donors uh, were right behind him. He raised a record amount of money. But in the last few weeks, we've seen him lose staff. He's had to fire staff. He's gone down in the polls, not up. Uh, and he's had some really embarrassing moments. So. Who is going to be the alternative to Donald Trump? I think you're going to see lots of competition, people trying to break out, even as DeSantis tries to recover. Well, I'm glad that you brought up Ron DeSantis. OK, so we know Trump is not going to be there. And at first I was like, well, I wonder why, you know, but then I, I've been following him as he's been touring, going to different states. And I, I really like, you know, many of the things that he's saying. And. I feel like maybe he's like, OK, well, I've been telling you guys all along. You can go back, look at my speeches. Plus, I'm the one in the lead. He's already been answering tough questions. He's already been dealing with the news and all of these crazy indictments and all this stuff. So I'm, we already know I'm in the lead. Now we need to know who else on the home team is going to be, you know, running against me. So I think, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's such a bad idea. Because Gianno, Andy Kessler writes yeah. uh, in the Wall Street Journal on the opinion page, he says, uh, here's 15 ways to win the primary, presidential primary. He's talking to the Republicans. And when it comes to DeSantis, he goes, you know what? Get back to your get out of my life uh, policy uh, that you policies, excuse me, that you enacted as the governor of Florida. You ended lockdowns, mask mandates, school closings, yeah. DEI requirements. Get back to that. Stop bashing Disney. Mm. Yeah. You know, part of the reason I moved to Miami, Florida in May 2020 from L.A. was because of Ron DeSantis' leadership. And I got to tell you, he's uh, sh shockingly has been the biggest appointment of the disappointment of this primary thus far. Hmm. Trump supporters are listless vessels. Like, what does that even mean? It sounds very insulting. Definitely a basket of deplorables moment. 
I don't think that especially a lot of conservatives thought that Ron DeSantis would be flatlining like this. He was at 31 percent up in March, went to 20 some percent, I guess, in June. Now you're at 10 percent battling with a, a guy who has no political experience whatsoever, who happens to be a billionaire, which I think some people don't actually know. OK, so we know he's obviously not um, in support of uh, Ramaswamy. But I remember that many, you know, we were looking at actually even on Sibo and Snapper, we actually did a video and we talked about about um, DeSantis and what has happened or what where has he been because people truly expected him to him to be on the uh, number two for um, with Trump but um, I, I feel like some of the things that's been said about you know taking money or him not really having the staff you know him not really having that support that he needs to run a full-fledged campaign the way it needs to be so so many things so many things uh, as, as well but who has a fresh vision for America but they has now ascertained uh, a lot of support when po with the postgraduate group of the Republican Party and also young folks, which is, uh, he took away a lot of Ron DeSantis support. So Ron yeah. is in a, in a pivotal place. You can, you know, come into the debates and, and hopefully strike a chord, but he's in a very difficult position right now, yeah. especially with the latest comments that have come out about him. Yeah, and, and again, all of this leads into, this is the primary, but let's not forget the general and you know a lot of republicans are saying let's focus on the general how do we win uh maria did ask rnc chairwoman ronna mcdaniel uh about the party's poll watching efforts yesterday morning listen to this one and ordinary people want to know if the rnc is going to protect them are you going to spend energy and time and money on that it, absolutely. We, we have lawyers on the ground. We've already been there. And this is part of our Protect the Vote initiative as well, is we're going to have mm -hmm. lawyers in every single precinct. We're going to have lawyers um, a, a, involved in every state. We had 19 councils last cycle. We're going to expand that. And we're going to have poll watchers and poll workers. But that is part of protecting the election. And we also have to protect people, make sure that they're not going to be penalized for being part of the political system. Let's go. Well, the Democrats are going to, I mean, they're going to have to go. respond to this. Your response. Well, I think that what you're going to see is that Democrats are waiting actually on the debate stage to see uh, which of the Republicans running for the mm -hmm. nomination say, hey, the 2020 election was stolen from President Trump. Who says that and who doesn't say it? Who says, no, it wasn't stolen and we need to get by that whole set of issues and move on to attacking President Biden uh, on the economy, on Afghanistan, Everything. Wherever, but move on to Biden, move away from the past. I think, you know, DeSantis has been in competition with former President Trump for the Trump lane and for the arguments over the past and, mm -hmm. and a lot of cultural issues. Mm -hmm. But if you think of Ron Vivak Raswamy, you think of Heard, uh, you think of Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, a lot of those candidates are tilting towards the future, but they refuse to deal with the difficulty of the past and the fact that so much of the Trump base is still locked in to what mm -hmm. happened in 2020. Well, even Gianna with the indictments, mm -hmm. you know, Doug Burgum was mm -hmm. on uh, one of the other Sunday shows yesterday and, and he was asked repeatedly about the indictments of Trump, but he just didn't want to go there, basically saying, well, you know, I don't have the name recognition and, and maybe it, they're, they don't want to address I guess the elephant in the room, which is Donald Trump Needs on to many be. levels, Gianna. So how do you handle Needs that on Wednesday? Be. Exactly right. They don't want to live in a shadow. And I understand that, but that is the ball game. You do have a lot of conservatives who are fired up and passionate around what they believe to be uh, unequal application of justice when it comes to Donald Trump. They've seen what happened with Joe Biden with the, the classified documents. This is a concern for them, and they want to know where these particular candidates stand. I don't think anybody on that stage will say like, oh yeah, the election was stolen. I don't think anyone would say that. Uh, but you just never know what could happen in these kind of debates and thinking about- But I think it needs to be addressed. I think they, as other Republican candidates, need to speak up and say something, you know, and I can also understand why Trump doesn't, you know, feel the need to be there. You know, how many times that he has, he kind of gone over that, you know, and, and right now, being sued, indicted for the foolery. So I, I truly understand, but no, I feel like it needs to be, somebody needs to address and say something. The electability argument, who's gonna be best 
up against Joe Biden. That candidate was Ron DeSantis. But if we think back to what just recently happened in the Florida state curriculum with uh, the one line about slavery and, and somehow making it and taking some positives out of slavery, that damaged his ability to really perform when it comes to black voters in a general election. Because at that point, Democrats can say, oh, yeah, this is just a candidate that wants to take us back to slavery. And that right there is a kill shot. Uh, Ron DeSantis could have said, I don't know how that got there. We're, you know, we're, we fixed it, we're moved on, and it could have been a non-story, but now they're- Okay, let me just tap on that real quick, because I got a video before this one that talks about this, or maybe two before this. Okay, I can understand what he's saying, how a lot of people did not like that comment. And I also talked about how I feel like it was taken, you know, out of context, but at the same time, it did seem as though it read, I could see where the misunderstanding or poor choice of words, you know, why they feel that. However, if we are gonna be talking about slavery, it needs to be from a worldview. It can't just be from a US perspective because that's not how it all went down. The whole world, Craig, the whole world, <laughs> the whole world was impacted and developed based off of the slave trade system. Such a horrible, and, and I don't even want to have to go into, you all know how, how we feel about that. That's just, you know, detestable. You can't even, their words don't even describe how such a horrible fake act that was, but it should not just be explained from a U.S. perspective. So I can understand to the point of what he was saying is that, you know, maybe when they were free, they would be able to use those skills to apply to have a better life. That is the only upside that I could think of, but I get it. And it's sad that that one sentence is hurting him or, you know, people are looking at it from the perspective of there were no benefits of slavery. You doggone right. It was a horrible thing. Looking at it from the perspective of the maltreatment and the mental slavery still on our um, how we view things today. It's, it's a horrible thing. But it should not be looked at just from one lens and one scope. And it should not be damaging him. You know, it, it needs to be explained, explained, and maybe reworded, change that one, one standard if that's, you know, creating all this havoc. There's much more to talk about when it comes to Disney and any other issues that can impact his standing um, before independence in a general election. Yeah, and Juan, you brought that up at the top of the segment. Juan, last word? Well, you know, I, I think what Gianna said is really important about electability. That had been Ron DeSantis's claim. You know, I think that's why a lot of Republican donors were behind him, because they thought, you know what, with all the baggage, the static around Trump, you're looking for somebody who can go out there and make the case to a lot of the independent and swing voters and say, hey, you know what, we back a lot of these conservative policies and we don't have a lot of the static. But now I think given the culture wars issues that are surrounding DeSantis, it's hard for him to make that case. Juan yeah. Williams, Gianna Caldwell, I could not think of two better people to join me this morning. <laughs> it's great to see you both. Thank you for having me. It's such a shame to me how we still are allowing just those minute words, you know, and I let me not say minute because so many people have taken that out of context, I feel. You know, but I don't want to minimize the situation where it could have deemed that it could have been a better choice, you know, of words. I I don't want to minimize that where people are perseverating and hovering over that in the wrong way. Nevertheless, we just had an opportunity to see who they're expecting to see on the GOP stage come Wednesday. It would have been nice if Trump has been there, but he's been campaigning hard. He has been having interviews. He has been saying his spiel. He's been, you know, the whole time. So take a break. You're already in the lead. We know you're going to be in the front. So let's see what everybody else is going to do. Let's see. And I honestly feel like it's going to be DeSantis and um, at, in the end and Ramaswamy and they got to get it down there. But anyway, guys, let's have some conversation in the comment section. Thank you for your support. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Snap Yeah.